Today on Locked on Bama, we're going to talk a lot about recruiting like we've been doing these last few days because there's been a lot of recruiting talk and there's going to be a lot of big time announcements this week. Some we are very, very excited about. In fact, I'd say all of them we're excited about. We're also going to talk about since there are 41 days left as of right now, we're going to talk about our favorite 41s. 41 is an interesting number in Alabama football history. So can't wait to talk about that with my boy, Jimmy Stein. Stick with us. Here we go. Locked on Bama. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody, and welcome back into Locked on Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy Stein, how are you today? Good, good. A little tired. Beach day yesterday wears me out. And, uh, man, we got a big recruiting week coming up, so I'll I'll need to uh, recharge today. Just like a Tennessee football coach, you can't hide money when you're talking about Jimmy Stein. Uh, (laughs) That's a little funny. That's not great. Well, not a great start. Uh, This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. I want to thank LinkedIn LinkedIn for being a sponsor these days. I'll talk about them in just a minute. They are a great company. Go check them out if you need some employees. I know you probably do. Jimmy, we're going to talk about recruiting in the next two segments. But for the first segment, just because it was something we were doing earlier in the year where we were counting down, but then so much news happened, we hadn't been able to keep up with it. But, you know, number 41, there are 41 days left until Alabama football. so number 41 is really kind of interesting and cool. Of course, number 41 now is Chris Braswell. A lot of people like him. He's he's um, really come on in the spring is, is what we're told. That would be fantastic. If you have Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner, and Will Anderson doing big things, yeesh, feel bad for the opposing offenses. Um, but who's your favorite 41? Mine, I'll tell you, uh, is probably Ralph Staten, just because um, he's a dude that, he looked a little undersized. He was just country strong, and um, he always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. He was the quintessential Gene Stallings kind of recruit. I did a little Wikipedia search on him, and I found like in 2013 he was he was arrested for some you know he was suspected in connection with a kidnapping and a murder. It turned out to be somebody else. So uh, thankfully it wasn't him, but he was arrested also for evading police and speeding and whatever. Um, and that was the last thing I've been able to find. I was hoping there was some redemption in there, and I'm sure there is. But regardless of all of that, Ralph Staten's my main man. I mean, number 41 for me is Ralph Staten. And if I had to rank them, I'm going Ralph Staten, Roman Harper, Courtney Upshaw. Those are my three number 41s that in my Alabama history book head. Yeah. It's hard Staten. to argue with him. Probably – probably rank them the same way. Uh, Staten to me would be my number one, uh, number 41 of all time. Probably enjoyed watching him play defense as much as anybody. Uh, it, you know, I mean, you know, Will is the best defensive player I think uh, I've ever seen at Alabama, which is saying a lot because of Derek Thomas and Cornelius Bennett and others. But uh, Ralph was one of the most fun players to watch uh, and, and just dominant. What, what I love about Ralph is – he was undersized or certainly underweight. And and this is like impossible. If you'd ask me, can you play linebacker in college really, really, really well and then play safety in the NFL? I would tell you it's impossible. Yet that's exactly what Ralph did. He played safety for the Ravens when he, when he, when he uh, you know, went to the NFL. And there was really, he didn't really have a great NFL position at the time, at the way the game was played then. Ironically, he would be a fantastic NFL linebacker now uh, that the game has changed so much. But, uh, God, what a fun fun player to watch. And I know I've compared uh, Sunterine Perkins uh, in Mississippi to Ralph. Uh, I, I just uh, hold Ralph in such a reverence. People should know uh, what that means when I use him as a comp for a player, how much I like that prospect. And But, no, Sunterine Perkins is a really similar – uh, prospect to uh, to Ralph in terms of just how athletic he is and, and is likely to play an inside linebacker position, which is basically what Ralph did at Alabama. I think Ralph played outside at Alabama, but but Alabama ran a four three then, and 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 being an outside linebacker in a four uh, three is a lot similar to playing the will linebacker position for Alabama right now. 
which is what Ralph would play for Alabama now, which is what Suntring Perkins is likely to play at Alabama. Jerry, let me go ahead and tell everybody about LinkedIn. As the sun comes out, which it's out in full force today, I can tell you I've already been out there sweating like uh, like I was in church. <laughs> There's usually something else you say about that, but <clears throat> see, the implication is I've done a lot of bad things in my life, and so when I go to church, I sweat, if you didn't get the joke. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs. Helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. They're the absolute best. Create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add to your job the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. It's why small businesses ranked LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to, and it helps you find them faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? That's a lot of people every week. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may and will apply. All right, Jimmy, let's talk a little bit of uh, some recruiting stuff. Before we do that, I do have to say this. Uh, my main man, Jaheim Otis, posted a picture of himself. Dare I say he looks felt? I mean, dude <laughs> has transformed his body. It's like he went on the biggest loser, um, the expedited biggest loser. Like, we're going to make this, we're going to do a two-week biggest loser. If y'all remember the biggest loser show, which was like you lose, everybody fights to lose all this weight. He would have kicked everybody's boo honkers. And I've, I've learned to say boo honkers now because sometimes my daughter would walk in and I'd say other things. So I'm saying boo honkers. That's... Good one. <laughs> so anyway, Jaheim Otis yeah. looks good, right? I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it really is. And, and, and I believe he has attributed a lot of it to diet as opposed to the conditioning, which, you know, is brutal. I mean, you know, the condition, I mean, he's working out with the team. I mean, you know, so, so of course it's brutal. And unlike anything he's done before. I think there's been such a scientific advances in nutrition and, and Alabama's at the forefront of that. Uh, you know, it's easy to imagine Jaheim eating at home what everyone else in the home was eating. And now he's moved to a new home and now, you know, uh, uh, and, and is being told what to eat by scientific experts who, who are literally uh, cutting edge when it comes to to diet and and reshaping your body. So uh, I think James given a lot of credit to Amy Bragg and her staff. Uh, it is amazing. What I would just tell people, though, I've noticed as James weight has has trimmed down more and more people expecting him to be in the thick of things this fall in terms of playing time. I don't really think those two things are related, to be honest. I mean, he's not playing football against SEC linemen. He's eating better and working out. <laughs> uh, I, I think the time is more in the future. Uh, we just have too many. I mean, who's he going to beat out for snaps? I mean, it's, it's not like all of a sudden we're going to sit DJ Dale, you know, because the true freshman showed up. I mean, so I just don't, I do think Otis will play in games this fall. I do think we will see him. I don't rule out him having a role maybe with the goal line unit, but in my mind, that's kind of a ceiling for, this freshman season and, the, and then next spring and fall is when we'll, we might possibly see him full time in the first team rotation. It is wild, though. I mean, I don't know exactly how much weight he lost, but if you ask me how much to guess how much he lost, I'm going to say he lost to Jimmy Stein. He, he just effectively <laughs> lost to Jimmy. It's like Jimmy Stein was on his back. No, you were in a papoose, you know. One of those things they carry babies in, and then he just dropped you, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh my god, that guy looks fantastic." Um, I'm going to go against the grain and say, "What?" I think he's lost seven. I, I think it's fair to guess he's lost seventy pounds. I, I, I think he's lost seventy, which is unbelievable. And it's seventy in seven months. I mean, that's I've never heard or seen anything like it. But that's my guess is seventy pounds. 10 pounds a month. And you know, the thing that sucks about weight loss, by the way. 170, by the way, but okay. Okay, so he lost most of a Jimmy Stein. Um, okay. he lost a 
the thing that sucks about weight loss, by the way, and anybody who's ever tried to lose weight knows this, that the first like 30 or 40 pounds are probably easy for him. That second batch of weight's always tough. And so that's why I applaud him for losing that because if you lose, if he had lost 40 pounds, everybody would be like, man, that's fantastic. But he's really worked his tail off to lose that 70. And so I'm, I'm super proud of him. Otis, my man. I'm going with that. I'm going to make a shirt about that and sell it to y'all here on Locked on Bama. Um, okay. House last night. Weird. I watched first 45 minutes of Animal House last night. That's funny. Oh, that is good. Caddyshack was on the other night. I had to watch it. It's like my second favorite movie of all time. Um, really? Next to Jaws. Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. Because it's uh, so transformative. I can quote it. I mean, I, it would be up there. Jaws would be in my top 10, too. And I, I've seen it so often. It's just one of those movies. I've seen it so often. I can quote it probably from beginning to end. But at the same time, like, I look forward to seeing it again. I mean, that that's one that never get tired of, of Jaws. Never. Um, and very quickly, um, Marvel dropped some absolute bombs on everybody at Comic-Con yesterday. And they dropped a trailer for Wakanda Forever. And even though Chadwick Boseman won't be in it, it looks amazing. And the the tr music for the trailer, if you're into Marvel Comics, and I am, and especially Mar the MCU, if you're into that and you hadn't seen Wakanda Forever trailer, shame on you. You got to go check it out on YouTube a ASAP. And also, She-Hulk looks a lot better. Uh, the Fantastic Four has been announced. Two new Avengers movies have been announced. Man, things are getting bananas in recruiting and in the movie world. All right, we said we're going to talk recruiting. We'll do that in the next segment. Let's take a break right now. We'll come back and talk about it. All right, Jimmy. Um, so let's get into some recruiting that we promised at the very beginning of the show that we hadn't gotten to. Uh, the way we're recruiting about, right now, the way we're recruiting right now, and the Avengers have a lot in common, frankly. Well, Saban is dropping Thor's hammer on everybody's head over here. Uh, so tell me about. Um, Tell me about who's all announcing this week. I know Hunter Osborne is going to announce when he's going to announce tomorrow, I think. I'm pretty counting that. I'm, I'm counting it as a big thing. It's not really, I mean, it is a big thing for Hunter, and it is a big thing for Alabama fans, because I, I, I'm I, I'm certainly uh, of a belief that, that Hunter Osborne is likely to commit to Alabama. So I guess tomorrow we find out when that announcement will be. My, my understanding is, and there's, there's no way for me to know this, and I, I don't know this, but my my guess or understanding is the announcement's going to be soon. I think he may announce Monday that he's announcing soon uh, what his his decision is, and I think that's going to be Alabama, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. What I like most about Hunter is he is fast and quick enough as a high school player to play outside at Hewitt Trustville. They play a 4-3. He lines up at end. He doesn't line up at tackle. I think almost anyone would think he lines up at tackle, but he actually lines up most of the time or he did in his junior year, a defensive end. And, and that just highlights what kind of quickness and speed he has because at Alabama, he is going to play inside. So, and, and he will gain a lot of this weight and size that Jaheim Otis is losing. As a matter of fact, there should be some way to hook up Jaheim Otis to Hunter Osborne and, and just, you know, uh, Avengers-like maybe create our superheroes by doing it that way. But uh, Hunter's going to beef up, add some size and strength and play inside and we know what kind of level athlete he is from just the very fact that he played outside during his junior year at, uh, at, at Hewitt Trussell. So very excited that uh, Hunter Osborne is, is, is very likely leaning to Alabama and we'll, we uh, may even get a commitment soon. We'll know when the commitment is on Monday evening. Okay, so what else is happening this week? I know Caleb Downs will be committing on July 27th, and we've talked about that, and we'll talk about that more leading up to it. Um, but I know there's some other potential announcements or announcements about announcements coming up. Yeah, Jalen and uh could be committing this week. I believe he is. Uh, I don't know that anything is set, but Jalen and Bakwe is another big lean to Alabama. Now, he's in the 2024 group, so uh, keep, keep that in mind. He's 2024. He would be the third 2024 commitment. He is the number one prospect in Alabama. When I say he's the number one prospect in Alabama – in this particular group, that cycle looks a little different than the 23 cycle. It's not nearly as deep. Uh, you know, it's just not not as good. It, it's it's more typical of, of a year in Alabama, whereas 23 is historically great. But uh, J Jalen Mbakwe is the number one prospect in the 2024 group. He is a cornerback. He has, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say right now, Kool-Aid McKinstry, just in the sense that Kool-Aid was a five star corner 
and we've seen what what Kool Aid's done at Alabama. Uh, I'm not saying Mbakwe's better. Uh, they do it differently. Uh, Mbakwe's faster. Uh, he can outrun Kool Aid, which is saying quite a lot. Uh, but I would expect a very similar impact uh, on the program uh, in terms of comparing Mbakwe to, to Kool Aid McKinstry. That's interesting because really the the only thing that I remember Kool Aid McKinstry fondly for last year. Now, I mean, I'm I'm thrilled to death he's on the team. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to have an insult here. Is the breakup of the the bad pass that T.J. Finley threw uh, in the two point conversion attempt right before John Mechie scored his in the Iron Bowl? Now, um, I think Kool Aid had an interception last year, if I remember right. Um, it was sort of a yeah. uh, not a super important one, but it was an interception nonetheless. So I'm expecting much bigger things from him. In fact, boy, I think he got some votes for All SEC, if I remember McKinstry. right. Uh, it, McKinstry, yeah. I, I think he was on my list of people I could vote for for All SEC, which I found, you know, a little odd. But, I mean, I just think his reputation precedes him a little bit. Um, where would Mbakwe be if he were in this class, do you think? That's a great question because look at how many five stars there are in Alabama. Uh, I mean, I would have to look at the list, but I, I, I wouldn't have it number one. Uh, I think Woods, uh, Rousseau, Smith, I think he'd be around number four or five, but keep Hurley? in mind. Mitchell? Oh, yeah, Mitchell, Hurley. Uh, I think he's roughly the I, – I think – I think Jaleel Hurley and him are, are real similar in terms of how I would rank them. So, you know, I, I have Hurley right now about fourth or fifth. I, I think he'd be somewhere in there. I mean, it, I, there's, there's just never been another year, Luke, where there's this many five star, literal five stars yeah. in our little tiny state. Uh, that's just so unusual. But I'll say Mbakwe belongs in the group, but I wouldn't put him at the top. Some yeah. of that is that positional value. I, I tend to rank based on positional value at times, meaning that there's a reason a safety doesn't go number one in the NFL draft. There's a reason right now running backs don't go number one. Who goes number one in NFL drafts? Quarterbacks, uh, pass rushers, offensive tackles. I, I'm going to tend to to rank those guys at the top for the same reasons. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I just it's going to be interesting next year because it's going to feel like there's a huge drop off. And I think you shouldn't look at it like a drop in the state of Alabama. You shouldn't look at right. it like a drop off. You should look at this year as the outlier of all outliers. I mean, you and I have been following recruiting. I know I have since uh, I was in high school with you know, late eighties, early nineties, you even before then, I never remember the state of Alabama looking like this. Now, forget the number of five stars, which has got to be some kind of record. The number of four stars has got to be close to a record, too. So um, it's kind yeah. of bananas. Yeah, I judge classes two ways, uh, in-state crops, and it's important to me. I follow it every year, even though Alabama actually recruits the state of Alabama less than ever before. I'm still hugely interested in, in recruiting in-state and where all the kids end up choosing. But I, I look at in-state crops. I judge them two ways. The quality of the top ten, meaning – Hey, when you line up one through 10, how does Alabama's top 10 compare to other states' top 10s? I mean, how, how, how many elite, truly elite prospects are, are in that top 10? And secondly, the quantity. Quantity to me means how many kids in the state of Alabama in this crop are good enough to play anywhere in the SEC or for other Power Five conferences? So that's what I'm looking at. Quality of the top 10 and depth of power five prospects. The 23 class Luke blows it out of the water in both. The quality of the top 10 is as good as I've ever seen it. The depth of power five talent is also outstanding. That makes this easily, if not the best, easily one of the very best cycles in the state's history. All right, Jimmy, that's going to do it for today. I got to say this, though, man, the, the people that have really begun subscribing and commenting more often on the videos, God, y'all are the best. We really appreciate y'all. Even if you disagree with us from time to time, which you have, we're fine with that. I mean, we just want the banter, and we want to be able to, if, if you think we're wrong about something, tell us. We're, I promise you, we are married. Hey, we I'll, get told that all the time. I'll change, and I'll change my mind. I mean, that's the thing about me. Uh, I, 
I have an opinion. I have an opinion, but my mind can be changed. Just make the argument. I'll read it. You might change my mind on something. That's why I like when people disagree. It's the only way I'm ever going to get better. Is well, like, and here's another thing, Jimmy. I think that, okay, I, I, I know I'm wrong all the time. I'm not stubborn about it. So I'm fine going, you know, yeah, that was kind of stupid of me. You know, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think that's fine. So anyway, y'all, uh, y'all keep that up. We appreciate you guys a ton and uh, we'll be back here with uh, Locked On Bama shortly. And until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.